As you'd expect, with so many internees here on the Isle of Man, there were some who would attempt to escape. In fact, there were 57 recorded instances, though none were free for more than a few days. They were caught and taken back to the camps. But one of the most ingenious attempts was from here in Peel. In 1940, the Peel camp housed some particularly difficult men. They were fascists, anti-British, and were regarded as traitors, and were out to make trouble. The Craig Mallin Hotel at the northern end of Peel Promenade was the camp headquarters, and a special detachment of London police were billeted here after a particularly nasty riot which shook the people of Peel in 1940. One night, after violent disturbances and yelling and shouting, lots of the lights were put on which reflected out to sea. The newspapers claimed that this put the people of the island in grave danger, as the lights could provide a target for passing bombers. The barbed wire fence of the camp ran up the side of the hotel and included a section of the northern part of Peel. This photograph from the period clearly shows part of the fence. The camp included the northern part of the promenade, where the present-day bowling green and tennis courts are, and this was the recreation area. The barbed wire fence of the Peel camp ran up Peveril Road here, and these houses were inside the camp, occupied by internees. Across there, there was another barbed wire enclosure, which contained the guardhouse at the entrance to the camp. The guardhouse was also surrounded by barbed wire, but the steps, though close to both fences, were actually on the outside of the wire. It was whilst walking up these steps, opposite number 17, that an army officer, on his way back to the guardhouse, felt his foot sink into the ground, right here. He prodded the grass and found it had been cut and replaced, and that underneath lay a flimsy trapdoor. Below that, he discovered a hole, about four feet deep, with a ladder going down into it. When officers explored the hole, they discovered it led to a tunnel, which went under the road and eventually came up in the front room of the house opposite. They lifted the flooring and discovered the joists had been cut away to allow access to the tunnel, the soil from which had been cleverly removed and spread on the garden behind the house. In fact, it was only a few days before the chance discovery of this tunnel that three men had escaped this camp and made it as far as Castletown. And because all motorboats in harbours had to be disabled during the war by having their spark plugs removed, the men had stolen some oars and got out to sea before they were arrested by a naval patrol boat and brought back to Peel. The captured men were paraded in front of the newspaper cameras as they were sent to prison, and there was little sympathy for them from local residents who were very unhappy about the Peel camp. Although it was never established whether they used this tunnel to escape, I'd like to think they did. Its entrances were soon sealed up to prevent any further attempts. Thank you.